So guys, this is our DHT11 sensor. This is our IC05 module. And here you can see that it is sending the data. You can see it's like 33 degree and 31 humidity. Temperature decreases, humidity increases, humidity decreases, temperature increases. I bring the heat gun in to increase the temperature again. So I will be using this heat gun here to increase the temperature. I just give some heat to the humidity sensor. Now see the difference. See, now the temperature is rising. It was 36 from 33 to 38. Now it is going up 40. See, humidity is decreasing and temperature is increasing. So that's how it's going to work. Hello guys, welcome to learning microcontrollers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can interface a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor with a PIC 16 fa 7 m microcontroller using micro C4 PIC programming. And then to display the output, we are going to use our mobile phone. For that, we will use an SC05 Bluetooth module to send data using Bluetooth to our mobile phone. So let's get started. So guys, this is the DHT11 sensor module I have here. The advantage of buying this module is that you don't have to connect a pull-up resistor by yourself. There is a already uh, a pull-up resistor is already connected at this point. So usually you will need a 5.1k resistor between the pin 5 volt and the signal pin like this data and the signal pin. If you don't have this module, if you have a module, then that's fine. You don't have to do that. So I suggest you always use a module or you if you don't have a module, then you have to connect the resistor. That's all. Rest your hardware is ready. As you can see that in this module, we have three pins. Top one is a signal, then we have 5 volt and then we have ground. While the sensor have four pin, one, two, three, four. One of the two, one of these pin is not connected. Rest of three are same. But if you buy this uh, sensor directly, then you have to connect a five, vo uh, 5 kilo ohm resistor between pin signal and 5 volt. That's all. Rest will be the same. So let's uh, get to our uh, microcontroller connections. This is our PIC16 FA77A microcontroller having 40 pins. It's a DIP version. This is the DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. And as shown below, top most pin, if you hold it like this, is the signal. Then we have 5 volt and then we have the ground pin. Now, guys, you connect the signal pin directly to any available digital input output pin of the PIC. I'm going to use a pin number D0 of port D. That is pin number 19 of the PIC16 FA77A. You can use any other available digital input output pin. No issue with that. Then guys, for the 5 volt connected to the VCC of the PIC, it can work from 3.3 to 5.5 volt. So VCC of the PIC will provide at least 5 volt to the DHT11 uh, sensor. Now for the ground connected to the ground of the PIC like this. In this way, your DHT sensor is connected, simple as that. Now guys, uh, for the output, for sending the output to our mobile phone, I am going to use this SC, SC05 Bluetooth module. You can use LCD as well or any other uh, display device like 7 segments, etc whatever you prefer and I will try to make video on LCD and 7 segments as well. It will be helpful for you. Now guys, first of all, at the bottom, if you hold your SC05 module like this, is the enable pin next to the button. It is also called the key pin in some of the SC05 modules. Setting for the modules used will be those which I did in my previous video. One of my previous video, I will share the link to that video in the description as well, in which I only did the settings to the module using the AT command. So in this uh, video, we will use those settings with the SC05. So guys, the next pin is the VCC, then we have ground, then TX, RX and the state pin. Now guys, to connect it with the PIC, you will connect the RX pin to the TX pin of the PIC and the TX pin of the PIC is the pin number 25, that is C6. For the TX pin of the SC05, connect it to the RX pin of the uh, PIC 16, FA77A and that is pin number 26 of the PIC like this. So TX to RX, RX to TX, simple as that. Now guys, ground will go to ground and VCC will go to VCC. In this way, our DHT11 is connected and our IC05 is connected to the PIC. Now let me introduce you to the hardware before we move on to the programming. So guys, this is the hardware over here. This is the mobile phone on which our data will be displayed by IC05. This is the DHT11 sensor. This is our IC05 module and this over here is a PIC16 FA77A microcontroller. Simple as that. So. Now we have our hardware. Let's get to the micro C4 pick so we can start programming. So guys, this is our micro C4 pick. Let me zoom in so you guys can see better. As you can see, it's version 7.2.0. Higher versions are also available. It is always better to use the higher version. But I'm going to go with this version. Click on File, New, New Project. 
this window pops up new project wizard click on next write the name of the project i write dht11 tutorial by learning microcontrollers simple as that now this is the path where your files will be created select like the microcontroller you are going to use i am going to use the pic 16 f 7 a and the crystal i have at pin number 13 and 14 is a 20 megahertz crystal so i will write 20 here now guys click on next and finish now this window pops up before you do anything else first of all save your work like this now before we continue let me first introduce you to the uh, data sheet of this uh, sensor so let me zoom in so this is the data sheet i'm going to use here there are many documents available ao song temperature and humidity module dht 11 product manual i will share this link in the description as well so you will you can uh, look at the data sheet as well now this is the product overview uh, temperature and humidity sensor and uh, let's get to how to do the programming okay this is fine move down okay here you can see that it is showing four pins while we are using a module so it's simple as that see that uh, they are the four pin and here he has connected this resistor i was talking about see this is that five volt resistor if you don't use a module then you have to connect that uh, resistor as well now let's get to the okay now this is important for us Serial communication description single wire bidirectional signal pin. How to use that? It says that DHT11 device uses a simplified single bus communication. Single bus that only one data line. Okay, that's good. Now let's go down. Now here it shows it says a single bus usually requires an external approximately 5.1 kilo ohm pull-up resistor. So you have to connect it if you don't use a module, else it's fine. Because with the module, there is a resistor on board. Now let's start the programming. Now it says that single bus data transfer data bit definition data is used for communication between microprocessor and dht11 and synchronization one bus data format of 40 bit data transfer serially the data will come serial now data format is like this it will send 8 bit humidity integer data then it will send its decim decimal like humidity is 24.65 then 24 is sent in the first bit uh, first byte and then the next byte will be its decimal Similarly, then it will be temperature and then temperature decimal and then the parity bit. This is wrong. This is not here. It's 8 bit temperature, integer data and this you have to cancel. Uh, I think it's written by accident. Then 8 bit temperature decimal data. Now that's all. Then the checksum. Checksum is like the addition of all the bits. So it also tells you about checksum. To get the checksum, you simply have to like here he's saying calculate, add up all of these bits. Like you will add this, 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 this height humidity data then its decimal places height temperature data then decimal places the summation of all of these four will be the parity bit so this will ensure that we got the correct data so now we have to do the programming for the programming you go down he shows this diagram here that your microcontroller will give a low signal then a high signal then it will this will be the output state now it will become the input now it will send the response either the sensor is ready or not if the sensor is ready you will get a response bit and then you will start reading the data that's all now it also shows the steps here now this is a step one for reading data see peripheral reading data steps this is a step one now first of all he says that dhd 11 after power up uh, power after dhd 11 for one second to wait to cross an unstable state during this period so we go to our micro c so it says that whenever the system will be powered up you will need a one second delay so i write here while one forever loop will start here and here we give a delay of one second here because it's necessary it's in unstable state so this is our delay of one second i can say that power up time okay that's all now i go back to the data sheet now here it says that test environment data record data while the line data pull up okay this is okay now the step two it says that microprocessor input output while the output is set to low now see here output is set to low and low retention time cannot be less than 18 millisecond now we make a function of that this is the start process now see how to start uh, make the sensor that data should be sent like in the chip sets chip set uh, 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 pin you put the chip set chip select either high or low to bring the data in like in case of a thermocouple but here you have to send a zero for a specified period of time then the data will start coming 
Now for this we will make a function here for the start signal. We have to pull a bit low as it says for 18 millisecond. Now in the step step two, it says that retention time cannot be less than 18 millisecond. Then the microprocessor is set to enter the state. Then the microprocessor will be the input state. Now the sensor will send a check bit. So we go back to our micro C and we make a function here above this. I write it as initialization void initialization void initialization sensor okay that's what i wrote you can write any name to the function that you want okay then this is the function we are creating we will use it in our forever loop okay starts here so first of all our pin we are using here is test d dot f0 equals to 0. Now it is an output. That is what it is saying in the data sheet. The microcontroller has to send a signal. So for that it must be 0. 0 means it is an output. The microcontroller will send not receive. Now we have to make it go low as shown in the figure equals to 0. Uh, okay, Let me show you how. So take a look here. Now see it will go low. It is going down not up. Whole signal must be low for 18 millisecond. Then the DHT11 will understand that the he have to start sending the data. So when once it's low, then it should remain low for 18 millisecond, like this 18. That is what it is saying in the data sheet. And then it will go high. Port D dot F0 equals to 1. Then the signal will go high. See that it's low for 18 millisecond, and then it is going high over here after releasing the bus master pulling. Okay, it's low for 18 millisecond, then it goes high and now our state was output, now we will become input. Now we have to get the data from the sensor. For that, give some delay, uh, the millisecond is too much, just give microsecond delay, 30 will do fine, 30 microsecond delay and then pull the pin as input. That is what it is saying. See that? initialization of sensor. Now instead of 0, now it is 1. Now our pin will become input. See that? That is what is going to happen here. First of all, we are turning our pin where the sensor is connected D dot F0 as output. Then we send a low state and for 18 milliseconds, then we uh, stop sending the low state, we make it go high. And at the same time, we turn this pin instead of output to input. Now we will receive the data from the sensor through this pin. Now this is done. This is our initialization sequence. Now we move to our check response. Now sensor, once we have sent this, the sensor is ready to send that data. So what I do is that I copy this. I call this, call this. Instead of writing the whole code, I had written the function. This is the function we just wrote. I copy it. I place it right here. Now the start signal has been sent to the microcontroller. Now, after receiving the start signal, what the data sheet says further is that the start signal is sent. Now, step 3. DHT11, the data pin, when external signal is detected low. See, when the low signal is detected, waiting for the external signal low end. After a delay, DHT11, the data pin is an output. Now, see that that is what is it is saying that. Now, it has been turned into output. Now, the output low as 80 microsecond response signal. Okay, now that's fine. Followed by the 80 micro notify the second high peripheral is ready to receive data. The microprocessor input output at this time in the input state detecting input output with low DH11 eco signal to wait for 80 microsecond high data receiving and sending signal as shown. Now take a look here. Now what it says that that's why we gave a 30 microsecond delay that now the data transmission will take place after 80 microsecond it will send a check response. Now we have to get the check response from the sensor. Now if the sensor sends 0 after 80 microseconds, then we will turn, uh, we will see if the pin goes high. See, pin will go low and then the pin must go high. We have to check once it goes low and after 80 microseconds, it has to go high. If it is high, it means that the check bit has been sent. We will make it 1. Now here again, now the uh, DHT11 sensor have to send to you. Now we are going to send here that we are already sending one. Okay, the one has been sent. 
and our pin is sending a 1 but it is now in the input state our pin is high so now what the sensor will do is that sensor we have to check if the sensor is sending a 0 after 80 microsecond of turning our pin high and input and if the sensor is sending 0 and after 80 microseconds it sends a 1 it means that a check has been received that the sensor is saying I am ready to send the data. So we program it now we go to our micro C let me zoom in we make another function for the check now it was for, for the initialization now I write void sensor ready response this is a new function I am going to make here now this will uh, sensor will tell us either it is ready or not so for that okay it is void I write here uh, now we will take uh, some uh, variables I take a variable as response Res okay take a char unsigned char response that is all because our sensor sends a byte so char is a byte so we take response equals to 0 okay response is 0 by default now see that we have already sent 30 microseconds so for the 10 microsecond we are sending our this this command will take some time to initialize and then we have to give the rest of the delay the delay must be for 80 microseconds so I write 40 so 30 plus 40 it's 70 and this command makes it like these both commands will make it like 80 and here in the data sheet it says that the time low time and the high time must be for 80 microseconds so we are low the sensor is low for 80 now we have to check if the sensor has turned high or not after 80 microseconds so we check see uh, we have turned the uh, uh, signal and we are looking for it it's high now we check if it has turned high or not so write down if port d dot f0 double equals to 1 now oh sorry 0 now is the does it has gone low or no not okay we check microsecond if it has gone low go back to the data sheet see that we are checking here this is the low path it must be low for 80 microsecond and after 80 microsecond it have to go high so the after the start signal uh, we have given 30 microsecond delay then in the same time we are utilizing this type by turning our input pin output pin to the input state and then we are checking giving the response is 0 this is our own made flag and then delay 40 so 30 plus 40 is 70 and then it is like these two commands it is like 80 microsecond after the 80 microseconds we check ok let us let me get to your data sheet after 80 microsecond uh, of low we check if the pin is low state is low or not ok let us do the check ok after 80 microsecond if it is low then again we give a delay of 80 microseconds and we check further that if it had turned high or not so just copy this write down if it is high or not like this so here it is being checked after 80 microseconds if it is low now we check further if it is high and if it is high this means that sensor has given a response equal to 1 so we turn our flag equal to 1 a response flag is turned 1 now we give a delay of you can see that in the data sheet let me show you the data sheet in the data sheet you can see that uh, sensor sends low 80 microsecond if it is low that is fine then we check after 80 microsecond now if it has turned high it means that we are clear the sensor is going to send the data and now after that the 40 byte data output by the DHT11 data pin the microprocessor according to change of input output level received 40 bits now we are ready to receive the data 0 high level and low level of 50 microsecond and 26 to 28 microsecond format data low level 50 microsecond plus 70 microsecond high data so we will have data in two format low and high decimal bits and other bits so now let's uh, uh, take the data from the sensor now we have checked the response now we need to receive the data we will make another function in which we will receive the data so here you can see that this is our response now the response is 1 let me close the brackets we give 
as shown it is like 40 to 50 microsecond i give a delay here of 40 microsecond you can get 50 as well doesn't matter so it's 40 microsecond delay here so let's close both the brackets here you go and here you go now both of these are closed so here we are checking only if the sensor is ready it sends a zero for 80 microsecond and after 80 microsecond we check again if it, it has sent zero and then one it means sensor is ready now sensor is gonna send the data so we make a new function now here we will read the data so i write another function void so we also take it to our forever loop here place it here like this now we read the data now for the read data make another function i make data acquisition now this is data acquisition make the a capital data acquisition new function in which we will acquire data from the sensor starting here and ending here so what this bracket is for i think i should delete this okay it was here so we are okay now it's fine okay so that for the data acquisition we will need some uh, char variables i take like char I make it char and here too we will make it char because data is in char. So we take char equals to, uh, you can take any variable. I take AT and AB, two variables. Okay, AT is not valid. We take AC and AB. Okay, they both are valid. Now we will use the for loop. We will have one byte. One byte has eight bits. So we take a b equals to 0 and then uh, this is a b less than 8 because maximum uh, bits in a byte are 8 now a b plus plus just increment so we can get each bit at a time so we will repeat this until we do not get the 8 bits which make a byte because it's going to send data in bytes so there will be total 40 bits and total of 80 bytes okay like this and i also suggest you can move it up like over here but it's fine over here as well. so we move it here it's better to initialize variables at the same place so that's better so now for a b uh, this a b and a c now for the a b that is our variable which will be doing the repeating for the for loop now we use our while condition which i had taught in my previous video how to do the bit holding while exclamation mark port d dot f0 equals to double equals to 0 oh sorry port d dot f0 that's all not double equal to 0 okay that's all now this command over here will check if the port d dot f0 sends a 1 but as shown in the data sheet it says that it will become high when the data acquisition starts the pin have to go high before the data acquisition begins see it's high over here signal from the machine and then you will get your data so it so we will block the code here the code will check if the pin has gone high for d dot f0 and now once the pin goes high then as shown it is showing a delay here see that how much delay 26 to 28 microsecond so i just give 30 microsecond delay that's at least uh, delay microsecond of 30 like this now what uh, we should do now we check if the pin goes low again now go to the data sheet and look here now after that it is going low again see before the data acquisition starts for the low byte now again we go low okay where it is okay after giving a delay here see it goes low again if port d dot f0 double equals to 0 now we check for the low state and now we will do the either the we will add, add the bit or we will clear the bit now if the port has gone low see i write here if the port is low we will clear the bit okay now i do is that i and equals to negation of 
here this this is gonna use to clear the bit okay and this is the variable we are gonna use here in which we will store the bits sorry it's not i over here now this is the variable ac we initialize to char and and equals to it's a compound operator you can have it from the data sheet it's gonna add up and now in our case it's gonna clear if it's zero so what we do is that one we shift the bits and seven minus a b that is over here then double bracket close so this will clear the bit now else in case port d dot f0 didn't went low it went high then then we will add the bit simple so here we write i and instead of or we used uh, sorry ac now instead of and we used and here now we are gonna use or or this is the or operator equal to this is the compound operators now again do the same i so here we have a b a c okay that's fine a c equals to now starting bracket 1 now we are going to add up the bit 7 minus a b so that's all we need ending brackets now see the difference here in this command where we are clearing the bit i call it bit clear and i call it bit set bit set when we are setting the bit we do not use a symbol of negation here and we use the or and in case we are clearing the bit we use the symbol of negation here and we use and simple and this is the bit shift the shift uh, operator simple as that now we have looked for one here if the port d goes one now if the port b goes zero again now we write here now simply copy that because we are going to make the port b go zero okay signal pin goes one and now we check for if the signal pin goes zero if the signal pin goes one only then it's going to execute the bits bit section because we are reading the data now if it goes zero for zero just remove this exclamation mark that's all now it has went zero just end the function and return ac so that's all and end your function now your function is completed so let me check the brackets okay that's perfect this is good okay this is good this is good now this function over here will read that data now we go down to our forever loop and in the forever loop we have our sensor initialized we have our sensor response set now we do the rest of the programming i write if response this variable over here which was checking the response go down if we paste it here if the response is equal to one that our response is valid we are getting like zero and then one this means the sensor is ready like it will go after 80 milliseconds it will remain zero and then after 80 milliseconds of the remaining zero it will go one for 80 milliseconds now if it is one it means our response flag is high that's how we are program programmed it now we will check the response here now for checking uh, the response has given us one then we can now read the data now take some variables which will store the data we will need more chars i take unsent char i call it rb1 and then i take more of these for four bytes we have two bytes for the as shown in the data sheet for the uh, humidity and for the tb1 and this is tb2 that is for the temperature okay so we have four bytes here two for the humidity low and high byte two for the temperature low and high byte like integer place and the decimal place so now what we do is that we check okay let me copy the variable 
so I don't forget it. RB1. So first of all, as shown in the data sheet, let me show you what data we get first. Now here I had shown you previously as well above it. Here, here, check here. It says that first of all, it will send the 8-bit humidity decimal integer data. Then it will send uh, humidity decimal integer data, humidity temperature data, and then 8-bit decimal integer data, then 8-bit data, temperature data. Okay, so first of all, we will start from the humidity integer data. So let's go in. So this is for the humidity RB1, RB2, RB1, byte 1 of the humidity integer data. So we write RB1 equals to, now the function we made here, sorry, it's RB, RB1 equals to, this is the function we made here for the data acquisition, copy it. Now the, here it will do the data acquisition, here it will do the data acquisition for the first byte. Similarly, do it for the RB2, after that it will send the second, that the high byte of the humidity, then it will do for the temperature, just copy it, paste it here. Now we are getting our temperature here. So for the temperature, we have TB1 and TB2 like this. Now, first of all, it will read two bytes of low byte and high byte of the humidity data, integer and decimal place. Then it will read the data for the temperature, low byte and the high byte. Uh, low byte means it's uh, the integer and high byte means it is a decimal part of that data. Now it has read, now we need the sum. For the sum, we take another variable that, that is the checksum and for the checksum we can use the integer. So we take integer here, I call it checksum, checksum. Now what we do is that to check either the data received is correct or not, but it says that in the data sheet. So in the data sheet it says that once your data is received, what you have to do is that calculate as follows received data is correct only if the sum of all of these is equal to the check sum. So after that this parity bit, sum of all of these four must be equal to this value. In that case, your data received is correct. Now we do the check. For that, it is showing as this, that you have to add up all of these four bytes to make it equal to the check sum. If it is not equal, the received data is incorrect. See, so that's what we are going to do here. So we got our check sum variable initialized. Now what we do is that we write our command for the check sum. I write, first of all, we receive, read the sum. Now to read the sum, we will need a char, another variable. Or we can simply read it in the integer as well. I take it like check sum read. This will do fine. Check sum read will read the data. So go, let me go down here. I write check sum read equals to, it will read the data from it, whatever the data is, it will be just, oh, oh, why it moved up, okay, whatever the data is, it will remain here like this, okay, check sum read. Now see that we have our 5 bytes data received from the sensor. Now let me show you again, instead of charge, you can use the integers as well, see, 1 byte, 2 byte, 3 byte, 4 byte and 5th byte is the data parity. One Humidity, high humidity, low humidity byte, high temperature byte, low temperature byte, then the fifth one is the parity bit. So that's all. Let's go back and see. Do we have all five C? High humidity, low humidity, high temperature, low temperature, and then our checksum, that is our parity bit as well. Now we do the checksum. We check either the checksum is correct or not. For that, we have to do the sum. So I write here, if in the bracket, check sum, this over here, is double equal to sum of all above, sum of all above, RB1, this, RB1, plus RB2, plus TB1, plus TB2 like this then and now to do the check and zero cross ff now this is the standard requirement for ever whenever you are going to do the checksum checking there are various other sensors which also require checksum parity bit then you only have to do this that is what you have to remember 
that and zero cross ff you have to do this for the one bit data now if this is verified now we make a condition here only then it is going to enter this loop of displaying the data now if the checksum is good it will enter this loop if it's wrong it will give an error else we will display an error for that we initialize our sc05 now we are going to display the stuff so we go to our libraries expand the libraries go down here you have this uart library expand it and you initialize the uart for the sc05 double click on this uart1 okay here we go go down in the example here you have this command uart1 i90 copy it place it below the void main here now this is initialized give it delay ms initialization delay so we have initialized sc05 and 9600 bonded because in the video there will be in the description there will be a link to a video in which i told you how to uh, set up how to do the setting of your sc05 we have sc05 set at 9600 bonded so that's all so uh, we also give this d dot f0 equals to zero this is not necessary but i suggest you give it because it may cause trouble later on so we also make it low our pin which is the signal pin now the sc05 is initialized we can send data so in the else here i write uart1 write text what it should write copy this command uart1 write one write text here it should write uh, that uh, in case check some error i simply give here check some error that's all now now this is fine in case there is a checksum error this sum is not equal to the checksum received sum of all of these all of four values is not equal to the checksum read then it will show uart uh, write text checksum error on the our mobile phone okay that's all now for this response if our response is not correct then else the response that the response pin has not turned one after getting zero then again it will display an error and this error will be i write something else here invalid sensor or sensor not responding please write this sensor not responding that's all now that's what we gonna get in case sensor is not responding and this is for the check some error like this so we will get our errors as well now if the checksum everything is fine our sensor is responding and our, we have no checksum error then we will display the data now to display the data first of all we convert the data to integers for that simply take more integers write down here integer i take temp richer and then i take another integer as integer humidity and then we take chars in which they will be converted because we cannot display integers we have to send them by converting them into chars so we take temperature one and the it can have at least two digits and similarly we do for the humidity humidity one at least two digits it can store like this now we have our uh, integers so first of all we go for the temperature this is the temperature we go down and inside it we display the temperature i write here temperature equals to uh, okay we are not going to display the decimal data because the sensor is anyhow not very capable uh, very accurate so this is the decimal data and this is the integral part of uh, humidity and then similarly we have integral integral part and here we have our decimal part that's all decimal part data and integral part okay i make it part and this is for the humidity humidity rh this is rh and this is temp t t temp okay that's all now we only gonna need the integral part so we only go do with these two 
if you want to display these you can display them as well that's no issue but i am only going to display this so for the temperature first this is the temperature integral part equals to this now it is uh, stored in an integer variable okay temperature is now in the integer variable now we go to our conversion similarly do it for the other one as well first of all go to the conversion library we will do it by copy pasting it here mark the conversion library expand it and you have int to string command double click on it now this command over here copy it go back paste it here like this and this is the integer which is to be converted and here you will use the uh, char we just created here this one temperature one it will be converted whatever the integer is in this will be converted into this here now we display it for that you will use this uart one write text that's all write text now but it should write this over here whatever is in this variable should be written on the screen and this will be our temperature now to make it more presentable uh, before sending this i will send temperature temp like this give spaces equals to before that also a space equals to the temperature will be sent and after sending the temperature it will send equals uh, degree celsius c c now the temperature is sent now we also send the humidity as well copy this complete over here give some spaces here now we send the humidity for that bring the humidity variable from above this is the humidity oh, sorry this is the integer humidity variable go down paste it here and this is this only the integral part we are sending not the decimal part so rv1 is the integral part of the humidity here now this is rv1 and now we do the conversion whatever is in this should be converted in this and only one is added that we recheck is it is this the same variable yes it is the same variable okay that's all now here what it will display it will display the humidity and we make it humidity equals to and here we make it percentage because it's in percentage now that's all now i build this code uh, is there any error yes we have error so let's debug the error first so we have error with the brackets so let's check the bracket now for the initialization it's fine for the response it's fine for the data acquisition okay we have a problem so we have more brackets than expected for for loop no we have not given okay let me do the debugging okay let's recheck the brackets so these both are i think not required they are accidentally placed here so let's build okay we have another bracket over here we are missing okay sorry for that this one is for the for loop and then we have another bracket for this data acquisition we forgot that now still we have one bracket missing so let's try to build this okay i can see that there is a bracket missing so let me debug okay i had found the error so this is the error we made this mistake this while has to come inside it so it is inside this okay now it's fine now this is fine now this is fine now let's see any more errors okay we still have error over here let's check okay there must be a problem with the bracket we are missing a bracket i guess there is three brackets okay yes that's a problem so it's done let me recheck okay we are good to go no more errors so it's done now let's burn this into the microcontroller so this is micro c uh, picket 3 programmer tool let me check the communications the device is connected or not okay it is detecting the picket click on file import hex file this is the file we just created click on write okay the new file is being written let's get to the hardware so this is our, our hardware over here 
let's install the app as well bluetooth app okay our circuit is working let me power up the circuit using this so let's connect the sc05 and see whatever the data we are getting so here we go go to the play store just write down sc05 okay it's already written and selected and here you have the top one use any you like they all do the same click on install okay in that time we connect the bluetooth now click on the bluetooth here turn on the bluetooth bluetooth it's on okay the device is already i have connected it previously it's connected that's fine now the device okay app is installed turn on the app and uh, click on these three icons here in the terminals devices give it the permission allow okay here we go learning microcontroller it is connecting connecting to learning microcontrollers that is the sc05 name connected okay see we are getting our data here see temperature 19 humidity 67 now i will try to change the data so we can see is it valid or not so let's let's change the data i bring in the heat gun i will be using this heat gun to change the data see this is the heat gun i give some heat over here okay let it heat up and see the data changes or not so we are getting like 90 degree of centigrade of temperature see the temperature is going high you can see that temperature is now 60 degree centigrade heat gun is at full setting it's at full setting so you can see the temperature is going high humidity also changing i just warmed up the sensor see i gave more heat to the sensor okay now let's check the data now sensor is warmed up see the temperature has changed to 60 see 60 degree and humidity is at 3 percent because of the temperature now i had removed the heat gun see now it will start to fall it's still warm very warm so let it fall see it is falling it is simple as that guys in this way you can interface this dht 11 uh, by following this data sheet usually it is a very cheap sensor easily available in the market but as compared to lm35 and other sensors it is very accurate as compared to them and it is easily available in the market as well but the problem with it is that it is difficult to program so i had taken a lot of time for you guys to make it easy for you to learn how to program this sensor so i hope you guys learned something from this video this is simple as that let it fall see that still the sensor is warm let it cool down i don't have cold water else i could put the cold water on it So guys, as you can see, the sensor has cooled down. I had paused the video so we can get to the next video. See, now the temperature has fallen back to 23 degrees and humidity is increasing. So if the temperature increases, humidity decreases, temperature decreases, humidity increases. So that's simple. Now again, I give some temperature. I bring the heat gun in, heat gun in and we see the rise in temperature. See, see again, the temperature is rising. See that from 23, it has went to 24. See now 29. That is how it is going to work. See 31, 32. Because we had just again warmed up the sensor and the humidity is decreasing, temperature is rising. That simple as that. So, guys, thank you very much for your time and patience. I hope you guys learned something from this video. It is a very detailed video on DHT 11. So, if you still have any questions, you can ask in the comment. So, uh, I will share the micro C for paid code in the description of the video, all the code files in the Google Drive link. 
So you can just open the link and download all the files and use them and you can play with the code as you like. So guys, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye until then.